Hello. This is the first of a set of videos that's going to explore quadratic functions. Now for some of you, the word function might be throwing you off a little bit. So I will say this, a function is a special type of relationship. Often students will first learn quadratic relationships and then later on when they learn about these things called functions, they learn that a quadratic relationship is in fact a special type of relationship called a function. Um, so. I'm referring to them as quadratic functions, but for all intents and purposes, a function is the same thing as a relationship. A function is just a special type of relationship, which you might not have defined yet. So we want to get an understanding of what does a quadratic graph look like. And to do that, we're going to start by using a good old table of values here. So we're going to substitute into this table of values and find some points so we get an idea of what a quadratic function, quadratic relationship looks like. So what this means here is that I'm given my x values. These are called my independent variable. It's called my independent variable. And the y is called my dependent variable because the y depends on the x. So if x is negative 3, what that means is y is going to be negative 3 squared. And now remember, we want to square the negative 3. So that's going to give me 9 negative 2.5 squared 25 times 25 is going to be 625 so this is going 2.5 squared is going to be 6.25 and so now we can actually we don't have to write this every time negative 2 squared is 4 negative 1.5 squared is 2.25 negative 1 squared is 1 0 0.5 squared is 0 0.25 0 squared is 0 0 0.5 squared is 0 0.25 you might notice an interesting thing here look at this 0 0.5 squared is the same as 0 negative 0 0.5 squared and if I continue I see that Notice there's a, there's a sense of symmetry here on either side of zero. The values here are the same as the values up here. There we go. So look at that interesting set of symmetry. So if we want to graph x squared for the first time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these points and I'm going to plot them on a Cartesian plane. Now the temptation here might be to plot every one of these points, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plot the actual integer pairs. So we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, and then negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4, negative 3, 9, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the dots. So I'm going to come up this branch, do this, and I'm going to come up this side of the branch like this. Oh, that's not very good. Well, let's try that again. A couple things to remember when you do this. Don't forget to put your arrows on the end. So there's my arrows. And well, often what students do when they get up into this region of the graph is they kind of branch off over here. Remember, continue to go up. One thing you can do if you're, is you can add one more. You can say, well, 4 squared is 16. So I have to make sure that I say to the left of the 4 value, which is kind of here. And that is what a quadratic relationship looks like. This is what we sometimes call my parent graph. So we're going to be drawing a whole bunch of different quadratic relationships that, that have the exact same shape as this, but are moved around on the grid. Um, and we think of this y equals x squared of my parent graph as the most basic form that I work with. And this idea of a parent graph or parent relationship or parent function, you can use any of those terms here, um, is important because we're heading towards a topic called transformations. 
and transformations is all about applying some change to your original parent graph to get some new what we could call a child graph the resulting graph and even though we're working with quadratics right now eventually the same principles will apply to different types of graphs so now we want to highlight some essential vocabulary here when we're working with quadratics the first is direction of opening the direction of opening is which way does this parabola open? In this parabola we say opens up. The vertex. The vertex is the point where there's a change of direction in the graph. So notice how this graph, if I trace my pen along here, it comes down and down, 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 down. Then I hit zero, zero, and I start to go up. So this vertex is the point where I change in direction. Very important. Important. A vertex is an actual coordinate, so I have to have 0, 0. The maximum or minimum value, well in this case we have a minimum value we can see, and that minimum value occurs at the vertex. So we say the minimum value occurs at 0, 0. Okay? And then we say axis of symmetry, and the axis of symmetry is, is, is a line where we have some symmetry in this shape. So if I take a highlighter marker here and I notice I can make a dotted line that kind of comes up the center of this. If I drew a line straight down the y-axis and then I folded this graph over you would see that it lands right on top of itself again. This is called the axis of symmetry. Very important here whenever we write the axis of symmetry we write it as the equation of a line. So the axis of symmetry here is x equals 0. Because notice this vertical line is x equals 0. So this is what we call our parent graph. This is a quadratic relationship or quadratic function and it's the starting point to a variety of other quadratic graphs that we will be drawing throughout this course. In our next video, we're going to graph y equals negative x squared. I hope this helped.